So I recently uploaded a video of me knitting a face mask, and it's now one of my most watched videos. These are the times that we live in. But the coolest feature of that face mask pattern was a method of knitting stitches directly onto a hair tie. And that pattern got me wanting to knit more things onto hair ties. So I figured the next logical thing to make would be a scrunchie. And I tried using that same cast on method to knit a scrunchie, and it didn't turn out cute. The scrunchie was all loosey-goosey and you could see the hair tie. It was kind of flat and not thick and scrunchy, like a scrunchie. So the next thing I tried was knitting in the round, a tiny little tube around the hair tie. And this worked, but it was a miserable experience. <laughs> to work a tube with that few stitches for that long, especially in the magic loop method that I used, was just really fiddly and really easy to screw up. It might be doable with tiny double pointed needles, but I actually don't have any double pointed needles right now. I know, bad, bad knitter. So then I knew that if you made a flat piece that was about three inches tall and about 15 inches long, you could just seam that onto the scrunchie. But I really wanted a way to cast onto the hair tie. That was what I wanted to do. And then I remembered a mistake that I had made when I was trying to learn the linen stitch. I cast it on an odd number of stitches, and then trying to do the linen stitch, I knit the first stitch, then with the yarn forward, slipped the next stitch purlwise, yarn to the back, and knitted the next stitch, yarn forward, slip purlwise, all the way to the end. And then on the second row, I purled the first stitch and with the yarn in back, slipped the next stitch purlwise. And I worked those two rows over and over, but I wasn't getting the linen stitch at all. I was getting what looked like stock and knit, but it was actually a little tube. Since I cast on an odd number of stitches, I wasn't staggering the slip stitches properly. So the slip stitches never got worked and they were still on the cast on. And the stitches that I was knitting and purling kept going, making this tiny little tube that wouldn't you know it, is the perfect little tube to put a hair tie in. But how do you get the hair tie into the tube? Well, that's where the tutorial comes in. So for this scrunchie, you're gonna need circular needles. The cord length doesn't matter so much, but I'd go for longer than 16 inches. And I decided to use Burnett Velvet because velvet scrunchies are the best scrunchies, right? You'll cast on an odd number of stitches, like I mentioned earlier, enough to make a 15 inch long piece. In Burnett Velvet and my 6 millimeter needles, that was 51 stitches. And the two row repeat is, knit one, slip one purlwise with yarn in front, Row two, purl one, slip one purlwise with yarn in back. Repeat those two rows for a total of seven rows. And then at the start of row eight, we'll add the hair tie. So purl that first stitch and place your hair tie onto your left needle. Then with the yarn in back, slip the stitch purlwise like you normally would. And then you gotta slip the hair tie off the needle and let it dangle here on your work. Then purl the next stitch. Repeat, slip the hair tie onto your left needle, slip one with yarn in back, and then slip the hair tie off your needle to purl one. And that's the repeat for getting the hair tie into your tube. See, it's getting buried inside here. 
Repeat that to the end of the row. It'll get a little smushy towards the end, but as long as your hair tie is on your left needle when you slip the stitch, and off of your needle when you purl the stitch, then you should be good. Now you've got yourself a scrunchie, and all you have to do is bind off and seam the little sides together. As for the bind off, I've got a couple options for you. There's the quick way, which produces this ridge along the edge, and that's just a basic bind off, where you knit the first stitch, slip the second stitch, and pass the first stitch over. It's a basic bind off in pattern. With this scrunchie, I did a very slow bind off, but it produces the smoothest result. This is a sewn bind off called the tubular bind off. It's similar to the Kitchener stitch, but with more steps. You'll leave a long tail and thread a tapestry needle. Then the five step repeat goes like this. Insert your needle knitwise into the first stitch and let it drop off. Insert your needle purlwise into the second stitch and purlwise into the first stitch and let that first stitch jump off. Insert your needle from back to front between the next two stitches. And lastly, insert it knitwise into the second stitch. I'll show you that again. Repeat. Insert knitwise, jump off. Purlwise into the second stitch. Purlwise into the first stitch. Jump off. Back to front between the first and second stitch. Then knitwise into the second stitch. You'll repeat that all the way to the end. And as for this last little stitch, I just threaded the needle back to front behind him and then knitwise to take it off the needles. Then you just seam the little sides together. There's a more seamless way to seam stuck and knit edges, but after that tubular bind off, I just wanted to sew them together as fast as possible. And fortunately, this Bernat Velvet yarn is very forgiving. So that's my new method of knitting a scrunchie directly onto a hair tie. Let me know what you think. Thanks for watching. See you next time. Bye.